need to get my juice. Man, this Oichi juice smells awful. Why do you have to be the one thing on sale? Well, let's hope it tastes better than it looks. It tastes weird. Ugh. Oichi juice review, 6.5 out of 10. Hi, it's me. The guy without an intro. So... Um... It's uh, been a while. I'm not gonna deny that I'm not the most consistent on my uploads. Mouse, get out of the fucking way. Dark Souls. Specifically, the first game. Because I'm not that competent at the other two. This is one of those games that I really wish I could like go back and record like my first playthrough. Because I feel with a game like this, your first playthrough is so much more interesting than playing it like for the 50th time. I mean from the perspective of an experienced player and a player who kinda knows what's going on. I can like do some things like explain the lore. And I can also like throw out some equipment that I like. This game has a really, really funny character creation, at least one aspect of it is pretty funny, and I'll, I'll show you later. But for now we have to pick a name. I'm extraordinarily bad at naming things. <laughs> I know the name literally does not matter, but I always, whenever I have to name something, I always sit and look at my desk for like five minutes to think of a name that literally does not matter and we're not gonna see for the rest of the game. Is this how you fucking spell it in English? No. Why? Let's name it after the questionable drink that I bought. Lychee juice. Yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with that name. Sex. Yes, please. Oh, never mind. That's not what we're choosing. Uh, do we want to be a female or a letter? Get it? Male. Letters. You get letters in the mail. I'm trying too hard to be funny. I think I'm gonna go with male. Now it's time to pick our class. This is the first choice that actually matters. Although not really. It only matters at the start. Because after you level up you can go any direction you want. But for the start it's pretty important. Because every class as expected has different statistics. For this playthrough I think I want to do a strength build. Like use really big heavy weapons. Because I haven't done that in a long time actually. I think I'll go with the bandit, because in my eyes it's the best starting class. You get really good damage right away, and he has the highest endurance out of any of them, which is a good thing. And here we can pick the gift. Now the most obvious one would be the master key because it unlocks so many doors and so many like shortcuts even if I don't know if I'll use it I still think it's the best thing out of all of these now the physique it just changes how you look this has no effect on the gameplay I think I'll go with average just the standard look at him he looks good as it is we could have a serious present. I think I want my presence to be average. Face. That we're not gonna see throughout the game because we're gonna have it covered. With this I can just show you the funny thing. So, it, okay, to do the funny thing, you pick this guy. Because this guy has, I mean look at him, he has the best starting characteristics. Look at his smile. Hair. 
We don't want hair. Hair is for pussies. And here is where the magic happens. Isn't this beautiful? Yeah. Are we happy with this? I know I'm terrified. We have a decent sized nose. Look at it. We'll be able to smell the danger five minutes before it hits us. See, the nose is so big that the smelling ability is no longer based on distance. We can smell through time. That's gonna be our special ability to this playthrough. So we're just gonna accept our fate as the time smeller. In the age of ancients, the world was unformed, shrouded by fog. A land of grey crags, arch trees, and everlasting dragons. But then there was fire, and with fire came disparity, heat and cold, life and death, and of course, light and dark. Then, from the dark, they came and found the souls of lords within the flame. Nito, the first of the dead. The Witch of Izanith and her Daughters of Chaos. Gwyn, the Lord of Sunlight and his Faithful Knights. And the furtive Pygmy, so easily forgotten. With the strength of lords, they challenged the dragons. Gwyn's mighty bolts peeled apart their stone scales. The witches weaved great firestorms. Nito unleashed a miasma of death and disease. Dragons were no more. Thus began the Age of Fire. But soon the flames will fade. And only dark will remain. Even now, there are only embers. And man sees not light, but only endless nights. And amongst the living are seen carriers of the accursed dark side. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead.
And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. This is your fate. And here we are, finally in the game. Here, a very kind man dropped a corpse that had a key with them that just conveniently opens our cell. I don't know why he couldn't just drop the key, I don't know why the whole dead body thing was necessary, but we won't question it. And we'll take his kindness and go. So here, right off the bat, the name of this place isn't very inviting. This is the Northern Northern Undead Asylum. I don't know why the word asylum is used. Are they implying that we're crazy? Does this man look crazy? As to explain why we don't look like what we created, it is because we are undead. We are right now basically a walking corpse. But we are not the same as those guys. Here, I, I will read the messages just for people who, genu who genuinely don't know what this game is. So with the right stick, yes, I'm, I'm playing this on a controller because playing this on mouse and keyboard is hell. So with the right stick, we can control our camera. This is going to be very important. Or not, because we can just log on to an enemy, which in which in most situations is better. The next tip is that with right bumper, we can attack R1, which I will actually equip the sword, the sword hilt. I'm used to unequipping it because it just, it's useless. It's just useless weight. But here we can, you know, learn how we attack. Ugh. I never noticed that there's bugs crawling on this body. Ew. Also, yeah, when you hit a wall, your weapon bounces off of it. Which is a pretty nice touch for its time. Here we have... This is not the tutorial boss. This is a boss we'll come back to fight later. But it's basically a stronger version of the tutorial boss. We're gonna see these kinds of demons a lot. Well, not a lot. But this boss has... There are three versions of this boss in the game. I don't know why that was necessary. But yeah, we're gonna be fighting this guy. At least this He's a guy that looks like this three times. Here, right trigger, or R2, we have a strong attack. 
which just which just basically means more damage but a slower attack that consumes more stamina. You see we deal 16 damage instead of 12. But it takes longer and if you look at the stamina And when your weapon bounces up, it consumes even more stamina. But just look at the stamina drainage here and here. So it's not really, I wouldn't really recommend to use strong attacks unless you know you're not gonna get hit. But I'll unequip it because like I said, useless. We still need to get our ax. Here, the last message from this hallway is when you hold left when you hold left stick and B, you can run, which is, believe it or not, a useful mechanic. Who knew running was useful? Yeah, here when you press right stick, you can toggle. You can lock onto an enemy, which basically just means that your camera points toward points towards that enemy. Which, if you're finding only one enemy, makes it easier. You don't have to worry about your camera going everywhere, and you can better like time your your rolls. We're just gonna let this guy sit in the water. He's not doing any harm. Let's just let him enjoy his bathtub. Here we climb out of this well looking thing. Man, if everyone has to get down like this, it must be a pain in the ass. And here we have our well, calling this safe calling this a safe point would be generous. We have bonfires. Which we can light. But when we just when we light it, nothing happens. You have to rest at the bonfire. And resting, when you rest at a bonfire, it sets it as your respawn location. You respawn at the last bonfire you rested at. Lighting it will not, you know, make you respawn there. If you want to respawn at a bonfire, you have to rest. You have to rest at it. And when you rest, it recovers your HP and your heals, which we'll get in a second. Yeah, only your HP and your heals. I'm gonna look if there's anything else. No. Here is a door, but that doesn't open from this side. There are some doors here that say it does not open from this side. And it's pretty much always a shortcut. Because why else would it open from the other side? So we'll unlock that later when you get around to it. And here you're not you're not supposed to be able to see up here. But there you see the tutorial boss. Yes. That thing is the tutorial boss. This is Dark Souls. And what you're stomping around is the, the demon below. Which is the one that we saw when we got out of our cell. They look the same. But they're not the same. But we'll find that out when we fight the other one. I'll take it slow. If I know I won't. Because here it tells you to get away. Because while you can fight this one, you deal 2 damage. And if I equip the sword hilt, You can see it doesn't fare any better. So 
fighting him is useless. I mean, you can if you if you're confident, but I might be confident, but I don't want to be here till tomorrow. So goodbye. I can't even dodge the tutorial boss. Fucking hell. Oh yeah, we're gonna say bye bye to Mr. Demon. And we're gonna go through this little gate. Bye bye. So here we get away from him. Because we literally don't have any means of fighting him without dealing two damage. And here we find another bonfire. Because. I mean, if you don't light it, it responds to you here anyway. Because if you were to return to the entrance of the arena, it's now locked. Once you've activated the boss, the big door that was there is now locked. So you need another respawn point where, you know, you're not completely locked out. Because if the door was locked, that other door opens from the other side, you would have nowhere to go. So this is our respawn point to fix that. If we die here... Although I doubt I will die to these enemies. Then we can respawn right there. Here. Anytime there is a... Guy anything, it means there's something to pick up. You can pillage corpses. And here we get our shield. These teaches us these teach us about the menu. You can open menu. And with the arms icon here, you can change equipment. Yeah. We equip the shield in our left hand. Because that's where shields go. And here when you when you press L1, we can block. Also, when we press L2, we can parry, but that doesn't really come into play right now. That's gonna come into play shortly. Here. Dude. Okay. <laughs> he's supposed to run away. I was, like, wondering if he's... Dude. Run. I... I... I broke him. You're, you're supposed to run here. Here. Just fucking run. Okay, well. Maybe he'll do it. Will you? No, I don't think he's doing it. Basically, he's supposed to run into this hallway and up the stairs. But I guess he's not doing it. So we're gonna pillage another corpse. Pick up our axe. We're gonna quickly equip it. Here we're gonna read the tip. Sh shot right into my head. But yeah, we can talk weapons. And when you press down, we can toggle items. Basically, the slot that lights up is what I'm toggling. So the one we can toggle the one at the bottom, which has consumables, and we can toggle the one at the top, which has spells. But I'm not gonna use spells because spells are for scrubs. Anyway, we're just gonna chop this guy in half. Because he just refuses to do what he's supposed to do. Look at him. He's even more dead than before. You okay? Uh, the physics in this game are amazing.
Fucking ragdoll mechanics are amazing. That's one of the reasons I absolutely love this game. So yeah, you can just have fun with corpses. Doesn't sound good, but it's fun. And fun is all that's important. So we're gonna go up here because that's the only path we can take. The, here is where the, the guy would have been standing if he did the thing he was supposed to do. Here we are introduced to a new thing. This is a fog gate. These are usually, like, these usually lead to boss arenas. And you press A to interact with it. If they are like this, just separating areas. Here, on top you can see another one. They are in the window. If they are just separating areas, they disappear after you walk through them. But if they are, like, there... That is a boss room fog gate. When you go through that one, it will stay until you kill the boss. Basically, it prevents you from just leaving the boss arena. There is an item, but we can't get that yet. So I'm not even gonna bother. When you press... Yeah, this. When you press B without moving, it tells you to, back, to backstep. This can be used as a dodge, but I never used it like that. I never even used bag steps. The only use I can find for it would be if you press it to get a running attack. Because backstepping causes you to do a running attack just like a running does. For whatever reason. And when you're when you're moving and you press B, it makes you roll, which is your primary dodge. And you may notice that we're rolling differently than before. This is based on your equip load. Basically what we have now is called a mid-roll. You can have a what is called a fat roll, but yeah, we can't accomplish that with the equipment we have right now. Basically, the mid roll, in my opinion, is the worst kind of roll we can have. I don't know, it's based on percentage of the basically, the one on the left is your current equip load, and the one on the right is the maximum you can have. Well, you can go o you can go over that, but if you have more than your maximum equip load, you're no longer able to roll. You will just not be able to dodge. And I don't know what the what the percentage is for a fat roll, but I know that you do a. Uh, for a mid roll, you have to be over 25%. So it's ideal to be under 25%, which I think is like this. Which you can see you have this roll. You have a fast roll, is what it's called in the community. In the community, this is called a fast roll. For obvious reasons. It is the optimal roll because you can dodge the fastest and it also the heavier you are the less or the slower you regain your stamina you can see here i regain it very quickly because i'm light but if i had a full set of armor on it would recover it slower here we trick the player. That's actually, what it's supposed to do is you walk up the stairs and it rolls down on you. But since I have experience, I won't do it. I think it can actually kill you. Because uh, these balls, 
This is not the last time we see a rolling ball, by the way. These have some of the weirdest mechanics in the game. Where basically when it rolls, it can sometimes hit you twice for no reason. And here, you probably recognize who this is. It's the guy who dropped us the corpse. And there is a hole in the ceiling. So basically to explain what happened. He dropped us the key. But then he encountered the, the demon that dropped out. Explaining why he was on the roof before. And his fight with him wasn't very successful as we can see. And he's basically here dying. Oh, you. You're no hollow, hmm? Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I, we're both undead. Hear me out, will you? Yeah, let's hear him out. He seems like a good person. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask, an undead favorite. Here we get the Estus flask, which is, with, without a doubt, the most important item in the game. These are our heals, and they replenish at a bonfire. So basically, yeah, like I said, this is the most important item in the game. Oh, and this. And here we get a key. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now, and thank you. Now I must... I would... Yeah, and th it just says the same thing. And now when we walk out of here... I kind of hear a sound. Yeah, and here when we come back, that was actually the sound of him dying. I don't know if he told us his name. Basically, his name was Oscar. Oscar of Stora. And I don't think he has any more relevance to the story. But, yeah, basically just he freed us and died fighting the demon. That is, I think, all the lore relevance he has. Here we can read a message. Yeah, we can use X to use item. So the item we have selected. I'm gonna do this just through the toggle. Here, we can toggle the item, the quick use item. If I were to use the dark sign, I would return to the bonfire but lose all my souls. Basically, the currency for everything. Use souls for everything in this game. To level up, buy items, upgrade weapons, repair items. Use it for everything. I'll unequip the dark sign because I don't want to use it. And we can also use the Estes flask because we're missing some HP. We can later upgrade our Estes to heal more HP, which is also one of the core mechanics of the game. Now you can see I have four. And now when I reset a bonfire, I have five again. You can later increase the, the amount 
basically we'll have the option to kindle the bonfire which basically give one humanity which we find out later what that is if you give the bonfire a humanity it increases your estus flasks by five basically when you sit at that bonfire it recovers it will recover 10 estus instead of five but this is separate for each bonfire so if I were to kindle this one, the others would still only give me 5. And here, you can see, as I said before, this door is locked. Which is why we had to rest at that bonfire that was behind the gate. Because otherwise we would just be stuck with that door not opened. Okay, the ball doesn't respawn. <laughs> Here, I'm pretty sure the tip for that is... No, it's actually a bit further up. I will show you. Basically, if you press L2 just before an attack hits you, you will perform a parry. Which, if you press R1 after parry, you can repost. Which basically puts you in an animation in which you're invincible, first of all. But it also deals a significant amount of damage. And here we use the key that Oscar gave us. Because when the door is locked now, we have no other way to go. Here, yeah, we can press Y to two-hand weapon. Which basically means... You deal more damage but most of the time it's slower and you have to sacrifice her shield you can only block with the weapon which if we look at the statistics here you can see the damage reduction there you have you know the physical damage magic damage fire lightning stability is how much Ammonite drains every time you block. Basically, the less stability, the more stamina it drains. And here you see it has a physical block of 55%. Meanwhile, the shield has 100. So, blocking with a weapon is obviously less efficient. But, I mean, I don't remember the last time I properly used a shield in this game. I'm just so used to rolling. Actually, there is one boss where I used a shield, but that's about it. Honestly, rolling once you get once you get it down, it's not that hard. Yeah, and here, when you press left stick and right bumper or R one, when you press them at the same time, you can kick, which. Kicking is not that useful, I'm gonna be fully honest. But if you press left stick and R2, you can do a jumping attack, which is sometimes useful. And I would demonstrate a jumping attack. Yeah, so it does more damage, but usually it's only worth it when you actually are falling. Now I'll show you the kick. Yeah, it does no damage. Useless. Yeah, and here we get another core mechanic. Resting at a bonfire revives enemies. But not all enemies. There are certain mini-bosses which do not respawn. Obviously bosses do not respawn. But all of the normal enemies, such as this guy, all of those guys that I just fought would have respawned. And another mechanic is a backstab. When you walk behind an enemy and you press R1, it triggers another animation. Again, you are invincible during that.
and again it does more damage than a regular attack would. Here you can see when you press R1 while falling you get a plunging attack which I'll showcase when you get back there. But basically when you want to perform a plunging attack you can either do a jumping attack off the ledge or just press R1 when you're falling. It just depends which one you're more comfortable with and which one is better suited for a situation. But I find jumping attacks to just be a waste of time most of, most of the time. I feel like it's not worth it. Yeah, here you see the backstab. They're called critical hits, but I never heard anyone call them that. From the front it's a repost, from the front it's a repost, and from the back it's a backstab. That's the terminology the community uses. Here you see this guy has armor, so it's a slightly stronger enemy. Yeah, and here it teaches us to parry. And after parrying you can repost. And Pairing can be tricky because every enemy has a different moveset. But once you learn their moveset, you can parry most enemies quite easily. Here, I want to explain what happened there. You see that I parried. It, you know, it made the sound of my shield blocking it, but I still took damage. That is called a partial parry. Basically, I blocked some of the damage, but not all of it. And it's because I pressed the parry button either too late or too early. It blocks some of the damage, but not all of it, and it doesn't give you the chance to land, uh, to land a repast. But it's still better than taking the full damage. But yeah, you can see that I can land the parries quite consistently. Which isn't really a surprise because this enemy is rather slow. When you get to the faster enemies, it is gonna be a little trickier, but honestly, I never had that much trouble with parrying. Well, at the start I did, but now I don't. Because you'll notice later that a lot of the movesets are actually used by more, like much more than one kind of enemy. Especially when it comes to these hollows. They are basically... When an undead dies over and over and over again eventually they will just go insane and that is what these hollows are they are basically undead like us that went insane so it's not like in this game if you die a certain amount of times you will go hollow and turn into one of those that would kind of suck if you have if you had only a certain amount of deaths you could have. But that's basically the story of these guys. The Hollows are basically undead who died so much that they went insane. Hey, maybe that's why they call it an asylum. I'm learning. Yeah, and here... This basically leads us to above the arena where we ran through the little gate before. And as you can see, the demon is standing right below us. So we're gonna do what the tip said. And like, you can see I did a plunging attack. What that did is you saw I landed and I landed a hit before the actual plunging attack animation took place. Which can happen sometimes. I don't think it happens all the time. 
but I find that lunging by doing a jumping attack is overall more, more consistent. Yeah, this boss really isn't hard, especially with the with the axe. Like, I can't see how people would struggle with this boss, but as long as you stay behind him. He's really slow, so staying behind him isn't that hard. And once you do that, it's pretty easy. So yeah, we got 2,000 souls from that guy. Which is, if I'm not mistaken, three levels with the bandit. And he also gave us a key, which we're gonna use right here to escape the asylum. And we also got a humanity. The humanity, what it does, uh, yeah, you get one humanity, which is the big number next to my health and stamina. That counter goes up to 99, and after that, if you have 99, you can still use a humanity, but it doesn't actually give you the humanity. It just yeah, you can see it restores a large amount of HP. It basically heals your entire health, no matter how much you have. Yeah, and the humanity, basically, if I remember this correctly, the hollows are Undead who lost their humanity. And this is an item actually not many people know about. I found out about it like a year ago. Which is like... Five years after I started playing this game. I never knew there was an item here. I just randomly found it through like a video from someone and there is a soul soul of the lost undead which these you can use i use it right now because why not you can use these souls and it gives you a certain number of souls based on you know what kind of soul it was here it was the soul of the lost undead which always gives you 200 souls. There is also the large soul of lost undead, which gives you 400. And here and there it, it scales. And I think the biggest one is the soul of the great hero, or the soul of a great hero. And I believe there's only one of those in the entire game. And that gives you 20,000 souls. But I have no clue where it is. So don't expect me to get it. And I also want to talk about how I said how it can stand up to even recent games. I mean, that is obviously just a picture, just a photo of real mountains, just recolored. I mean, we can't really deny that, just look at those trees. But I think it still looks nice with the fog. And the rest of the asylum... ...that we weren't even in. I think that also, like, looks pretty decent. Like, this scenery in this game is good. This game has good scenery. There, that crow's nest, we will return there later. Here, you can, you can later return to this location, which is when you can fight the demon that was down there. Which we will do eventually, but not now. Because now we are not nearly ready for that. And here, we walk here, because there's pretty much nothing else we can do. Oh, and I didn't read this tip. What, what did this tip say? 
Yeah, good job, go straight ahead. So it basically tells you to follow this brick path. And from here you just go forward. And you trigger a cutscene that basically takes you to the main area of the game. So enjoy this cutscene. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. To leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran. 